Hi guys. Good morning. Um, this is gonna be just a quick, quick video because I'm heading out early. No, I'm heading out early um, this morning to go to my mom's. Make sure this is not rotten. I'm really skeptical about the, the dates like that they put on the food when they say like, you know, when it expires, <laughs> especially the yogurts. Um, so I'm gonna be going to my mom's this morning. Um, I'm gonna go early to go visit them. I haven't seen my parents in a little bit over a week and I thought since I have a long weekend, I'll go visit them today since today's the last day I work this week, so yeah. Um, Sorry I'm eating and filming at the same time. It's the only way I'm gonna be able to film today. Otherwise, you guys would have to wait till I get home from work and I don't get home till like after eight. And it's usually late and usually by that time, the first thing I wanna do is take off the makeup. <laughs> so, this is what you get. Um, remember that coffee I was supposed to finish yesterday? <laughs> I never finished it. It's hard to chew bread, <laughs> like toast. I might have to go to water. Mm. So, I'm looking forward to this weekend. My husband's coming home. I can't wait for that. <laughs> can't wait for that. Stop, Starla, seriously. So I wanted to have something to actually talk about, you guys, um, <laughs> because my last videos, I really haven't talked about anything, and I don't know what to talk about. Mm. Mm -mm. No. Um, fall season is coming up, and every year for fall season, I always get that itch to read some, like a horror book. You know, I try to read more than one, but usually it's like I get stuck on other things and then it takes me forever to read just one book. But this year I'm looking for the perfect book to read for the Halloween horror season, you know? Last year it was The Exorcist. And it was really good. It was creepy, but it was really good. I actually read it. And um, last year was also the it was The Exorcist, and it was Stephen King's um, Salem's Lot. I read that one, but I was really disappointed in it. <laughs> mm. Salem's Lot didn't get creepy to me, in my opinion. It didn't get creepy till towards the end. So I was like, this was very much a no no for me like i need something that's going to keep the momentum you know mm. and the exorcist did that for me the exorcist was creepy so i'm looking for something like that for this year um i'm thinking maybe i'll just stick with like a, a, a zombie novel since i already have so many of those which maybe that'll be tomorrow's video. Maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll show you guys all of my zombie books. Um, or I could do like a vampire series. Uh, there actually is a vampire series that I picked up from the library I work at. But we're missing book, I think it's book two. Book two or, no, book three. We have one, two, and four. <laughs> but we don't have book three. So I'm not planning on reading the entire series, but... I have this thing where like if I'm gonna read a series I need to have all of the books available for me so that's kind of like eh, I don't know if I want to do that and I don't know if I want to get committed to a series so um, I guess what I want to <laughs> ask is if you guys have any suggestions I'm looking for a standalone horror book that I can read through this fall season so if you guys have any ideas let me know. Um, I'm gonna be looking through the catalog at work today and see what I can find. <laughs> um, and yeah, so there's that. <laughs> mm. What else? Mm. So last night I was talking with 
one of my friends in text. And she was asking, you know, for updates on how my husband is doing. So I was giving her updates and stuff. And we started talking about the future. And she was asking me, you know, actually a lot of people have been asking me, even some of my coworkers have been asking me, because everybody knows like what's going on with my husband, right? And especially work, because I think it's kind of important, like work with work. Um, so everyone is, is aware of what he's doing and what can happen. Um, we found out yesterday that he is going to be stationed to work in our area where we live. So it's kind of nice because he doesn't have to drive. He doesn't have to commute to work. I still do for a temporary time, which is what I was talking to my friend about. And I was telling her how it's really weird to be somebody, I've worked since I was 15 years old. I've always had a job, whether it was part-time or I did full-time for a little bit and then I went back to part-time. And I was raised as, you know, you're supposed to have a job. My parents really drilled it in me. They wanted me to get a nine to five, especially when I made the decision not to go to college. They were like, well, then you need to make sure you work. You need to get a good paying job and you need to work and be able to support yourself. So that was like always the goal with me. <laughs> and um, so I, my journey through work was really all through libraries. That's all I, all I knew. You would think I would have gone to school for library stuff, but I, at the time I was going to um, like one of those little trade schools for court reporting. And that I was in court reporting school for about six years. And I had a change of heart because I was hitting a wall. Like court reporting, you gotta be able to type 225 words a minute, um, four people speaking at the same time. And I was stuck at 200 words a minute. I couldn't pass that test and I was stuck. I think I was stuck at that test for two and a half years. I was going on three years. <laughs> and, um, and I was just like losing my interest. I was starting to get carpal tunnel. And I was like, you know what, this isn't, I don't think this is for me. I don't think I wanna do this anymore. And all the, all the while, while I was going through school, I was also working part-time at libraries. And I worked my way up through the library realm, um, gaining exposure and gaining experience in different areas so that it's basically my experience and my, my level of what I've done and, and all of that is probably the equivalent of a, obtaining the master's degree. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel like I've done everything. I've done the, the pages, the shelving, the books. I've done the library assistance. I planned library programs. I was a library page supervisor for a few months. Um, I, uh, I ran adult um, programs. I would sit and do the minutes for all of the library board meetings. Like I did all that stuff and I, and also the circulation desk. And so I have a lot of experience and, um, a lot of knowledge and yeah, there's like other things that I can learn, like the back, the back part of it, which is, I guess what where school would come in handy, but it's never been the goal. Like it's never been something I wanted to do for like the rest, if I, if I did a, a job for the rest of my life, I've always found myself to be that person that I just want simplicity. Like I'm not looking for the big high end paying job, you know, like that's just not me. <laughs> and when I met my husband, he's always been more of like, he wants to be grounded and he's, he wants to be a, a, a provider and all of that. So I'm starting to notice the role is switching with me. Um, I went from really like being drilled like you need to have a nine to five looking for that job that's going to pay you well and stuff and I have that right now like I don't have the nine to five I have like a, an off schedule because I'm not working full time but I am getting paid you know pretty decent um and it's been good you know but I'm at that point now where um I've been juggling the job and then I've been juggling my readings on the side, you know, and I really want to just do my readings. Like what makes me happy? What makes me the happiest is my readings, you know, I, and, and then also runner up would be definitely working in the library. Like I love that. But do I really want to do that forever? <laughs> It's, it's kind of hard for me because it's like, that's not where my passion is. My passion isn't library. My passion is 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 the, the spiritual, the tarot. I love doing those readings and working out of home would be the best thing. Like, I wanna do that. That was the goal seven years ago when I started this. So um, 
I'm finally at that point now where I think my dream might come true and <laughs> and now I'm like scared and now I'm hesitant and I think that that is that's what I was texting with her about I was saying um I'm excited for the, the the opportunity to be able to resign from my position and do my readings full time, you know, really take Cackling Moon on another level and really have the freedom because I have my own space now, my own home to do this stuff. Like I could teach little courses in my home if I wanted to or outside of, but you know, I can do in-person stuff. I can do in-person readings again. I can open up my FaceTime readings again. I could, um, you know, I have the privacy of that. I can start growing my YouTube channel and really focusing on putting a lot of effort in it. Um, and, and, and really one up my website, you know? So I have all of this, this opportunity coming up and I'm nervous. So that's what's on my mind. Um, is am I going to do that? Am I going to really dive for that? <laughs> and I think obviously the answer would be yes, mm, but I am nervous for it. What time is it? Nine fifty. Okay. Um. So <laughs> that's what's on my mind. Ever since we found out yesterday, when my husband told me that you know he's going to be working in our hometown, it's like sweet. So his commute, he won't be commuting for work. He's literally going to be like working ten minutes away. Um. For me, in the meantime, while he's, you know, going through his probation period, um, I'm still going to work because, God forbid, but what if something happens? Like, at least I still have some stable money coming through. So, I think it would be stupid of me to, to completely, like, leave my job at, at such a crucial time. <laughs> so, um, my husband and I talked about it and we have that agreement that, you know, I'm going to stick with my job for the time being until he feels confident and comfortable with where he's at and and when we, we start to get comfortable with the new finances because his new job will be bringing in um a new set of finances for us like a new um it's going to be a new budget it's going to be a new a new check basically like money we're not used to having and it's such a blessing um, I'm really excited for it, but I also want to make sure that we can, you know, we're going to be comfortable and that we can live within our means with his income. In other words, is he going to be able to be the sole provider for our little family, um, without the help of my paycheck coming in as I start building Cackling Moon up more? And then obviously, you know, money I'm making with Cackling Moon will provide for whatever else, but not having a stable check coming in on my end is scary to think about because my check has always provided the bills to be paid. His, his, his income would cover the rent when we were living in the apartment or the mortgage. Um, actually, when we were living in the apartment, his income was covering the bills and my, my check was paying the, the rent. So, and then we kind of, we swapped because our bills increase. Like, um, I feel like our bills, we have a little bit more bills, um, now thanks to me because of my car accident, <laughs> which was a whole year ago, but it's like, you know, you know how that goes. Um, but our bills did increase. Like, so, <laughs> so my check is covering the bills right now and his check is covering the mortgage um because the mortgage is a little bit more so no 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 our bills are less than our mortgage but you know my check covers all the bills so <laughs> and groceries um but it's nice like it's always been nice to have two incomes coming in and knowing that I always have a check coming in even though I'm making money off Cackling Moon it's like Cackling Moon has always been my backup money or the extra money or my fun money right and my library money has always been the bills money. Like, I don't get to play with my library money. Most of my library money is gone by the time I pay the bills and go grocery shopping. And usually I'm living off of um, remnants of his check or um, my cackling moon. So my cackling moon has pulled through so much. Um, but... <laughs> It's like if if we do do this, like if I do want to take Cackling Moon full time, which I most likely will have that opportunity to do so next year um, because his income is going to be enough to provide both, for both of us and for our stuff. Um, I can make that choice, but I'm so nervous. Like I'm so nervous to do that. I just saw 444. So, <laughs> so I guess like... Mm, 
I've just been watching videos on other readers. Some some of you guys put, put videos up. Um, I think New Age Hipster put one up before. Um, I think Carrie Mallon put one up before about how you guys jumped from corporate world to tarot world. <laughs> how did you do it, you know? And I think a lot of readers don't admit it or they don't, they don't, say that a lot of times in order for them to go full-time with their tarot business or their spiritual business it's usually because there's help with a spouse having income coming in you know I think not everybody is like that there are readers who are doing it 100% solo and that's amazing um because I I wish I could do that <laughs> but um I feel like a lot of us a lot of the spiritual entrepreneurs um, are able to do their thing, their business full time and jump from their previous job life to doing it full time because they do have a spouse who is providing for everything else, you know? And I know for myself, um, for me to be able to do Cackling Moon part time and, and stuff, that was a choice because I knew my husband and I still needed my income. Um, we were, we were very tight when he was doing his old job. Um, before this whole academy thing happened because he, he gets paid while he's in the academy so um before the academy happened his his previous job our income was very tight um i still think now because we're we're, we're so tight right now with the new income coming in and then like but obviously the bills went up um i think how the fuck did we do it on your other income <laughs> So it's just amazing how like you adapt, you evolve with the money that you are receiving. So that's why I guess I'm a little nervous to, to adapt and evolve with his next income as he graduates because does that mean all of our bills are going to go up again? Does that mean that our lifestyle is going to change to where we're going to need, we're going to, you know, be tight again? Like I don't want to, I want to have a lifestyle where we're comfortable, where we have money left over, we're not living paycheck to paycheck. Like I wanna live no longer paycheck to paycheck. I wanna be able to put a, a large chunk of our money aside into a savings account, you know, um, and remain debt free. And right now, like right now in the present, you know, we're not debt free right now. We, we have been putting money on our credit card because of expenses for his academy stuff, which is a necess necessity. <laughs> So, you know, it's just been, it's been a little bit different the last couple months. Um, it's been, finances have been weird. And I guess maybe that adds to why I, I am so fearful of going full time with Cackling Moon and leaving my, my library job because I won't have that support of a paycheck coming in. Um, and then also it's uncharted territory for me. There's a lot of housewives. There is, my sister's a housewife, but she has kids, you know? I'm not, I, I'm, if I become a housewife, you know, yeah, I'm doing Cackling Moon, but also it's like, I'm a housewife. I would be a housewife. Like I wouldn't be working, going to work. You know what I mean? I would be home doing my business at home and, and doing that, but, as far as like family and friends are concerned, people who don't know about Cackling Moon, I'm a housewife, but I don't have kids. So then I guess in my mindset, it's like, am I allowed to be a housewife if I don't have kids? Like, so I guess it's like, that's where my mind is because I've always seen my sister being a housewife, certain friends that I have are housewives and they all have kids. So it's just kind of like, if I don't have kids and if we don't ever have kids, which is fine, but if we don't ever have kids, are, you, are, are there still housewives who don't have kids? Like, does, does that exist? Like, <laughs> and I know that sounds stupid. That's probably like a stupid question, but it's, it is something in my mind. So, um, and then it's also me reversing everything that I was grown up drilled in me. Like you gotta work a nine to five. You have to be working to be successful. All of those mindsets I have to like toss out because that no longer resonates with me you know you don't I don't have to work a nine-to-five just even me working going back part-time 
was a shock for my parents when they found out that I left my full-time job to go part-time and they didn't understand because they didn't know that I was also making income through Cackling Moon. So <laughs> to them, they were just like, how, how are you guys doing it? Like, what, what's going on here? And so it was confusing for them. But I mean, I also went with the idea of it's my life, it's our family, like me and him. And no one really needs to know the details of our decisions. Like no one needs to give us permission for the things we do. And so I, I had that mindset with my parents. It's like, yeah, you guys are my parents and you may be concerned, but bottom line is, is it's really none of your business, you know? <laughs> so it's like, it's only your business if you're paying our bills and you're, if you're not paying my bills then it's none of your business. So, um, that's the way I see it. But I guess also the part of me, like there's a part of me that cares about what other people would think. And so I just wonder like, is that going to raise eyebrows? Like, is that going to raise this whole new, like, what's going on? Like, you're not working, you're, but you don't have kids, you're a housewife, aren't you lonely, aren't you bored? But I, I'd be like, well, no, because I'm living this bomb ass spiritual mystical lifestyle right now <laughs> doing what I do. But of course they wouldn't know that. And then there's a, a possibility of later on in life when I'm comfortable and really settled in with myself that maybe that part of me would come out. Maybe I would finally be open about it. So there's that, that possibility too. But I feel like I'm, I'm allowed to, to decide <laughs> when I want that to happen because it's my life, you know? So there's just a lot of things floating around in my brain these days. <laughs> I would love your guys' input. I love reading the comments. Like every time you guys leave a comment, I get an email notification. So until the one day, which if that even ever happens, when I have like a thousand billion thousand followers on the, or subscribers on YouTube, and I can't have the notifications on anymore for comments because it's just beyond ridiculous. But until that day, <laughs> I do get notified every single time you guys leave me a comment. So I do open my email and I'll read it. I may not respond to all of the comments, but I do read them all. So, um, Please give me some of your input. Are you a housewife? Um, or what would you call it for a male? Like a housewife or house husband, a house hubby, a house daddy? Like what do you call your guys' selves? <laughs> um, and are, so are you a housewife? Do you have kids? Are you a housewife and are you no kids? You know, um, what, kind of, what kind of feedback do you receive from the public, from people who find out that you're a housewife? whether you have kids or not. Do you ever face, you know, um, people who give you judgment on that or, or not? Um, and then also, if you have lived the, the experience of leaving your job for a personal, like, leaving your job to become a housewife for one thing and also leaving your job to do your own business like I wanna do, how did you do the transition and how did it feel for you? And what is your experience and any tips that you can give me? Um, I would love to hear it because I feel like that is gonna become my reality next year. I don't know when next year, but God willing, if my husband graduates in October, he has a one year, um, a one year probation period. And I mean, we could wait that whole year, so it, I, could, I could literally say, okay, by October 2020, um, I would take the leap, or it would be any time earlier when he feels ready and when he says, okay, babe, you could, you could do what you wanna do now. Um, because I ain't gonna be doing that 120 mile round trip commute forever. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> just the amount of money I would save from gas for that is just amazing, just thinking about it. So, <laughs> so yeah, I won't be doing that commute forever. Um, but I don't know. I'm scared also to leave because it's a good paying job and I love it. I love my coworkers. So I need advice. I need some tips. I need some insight. Um, and I would love to hear your guys' advice, tips, and insight. So let, let me know. Leave comments below. Um, and thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you guys tomorrow for another video diary episode. Have a beautiful day today, you guys, and I will talk to you later. Bye loves.